Welcome to Story Comic Presents, where we interview amazing storytellers and artists. This is episode 187. I'm your host, Barney Smith of StoryComic.com, and we're excited to have with us the acclaimed and celebrated comic creator of Rays, Sam Willis. Hello, guys. <laughs> I said Rays, right? Yes. So everybody's been saying Rise, so you're, you're good. It's Rays. <laughs> okay, good. All right. All right. I earn a point. Do I earn a Sam Willis? Do I earn a Willis point for that? Yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> All right, get a nice Sam Willis point for that. Okay, good. So, w- looking at it, you have uh, your your well over halfway on yes, your on your pledge right here. You're going for a two thousand dollar pledge mm-hmm. on uh, com- issues one through five of Rays, and you have 20 days to go as of this recording. That's exciting stuff, Sam. Yes, so we're doing pretty good, you know, uh, not to toot our own horn, but we had a really really good beginning start. A lot of people came into the project and uh, backed, and yeah, we had a really good beginning. I mean, this was kind of raises money, I'd say, around a week of it just being up and running, so uh, super excited about that, you know, and super happy that people are coming to, you know, see this project and want to want to back it and want to want to get all the cool rewards we worked on. What's interesting, you know, doing my research on this, Sam, this is the first Kickstarter that you've done for Rays, but this is issue number five. Correct. Yes. Talk to us about that. That's interesting. Yeah. So uh, we kind of didn't know anything about marketing or pretty (laughs) much the comic book industry. So we've been creating these issues for almost close to three years. So, Mm. Our idea was just make them and put them out. Um, And we kind of skipped the whole marketing part of that. So this year we kind of like honed down saying, okay, we're figuring out everything for production. We're making our visuals pop, our storytelling pop, but we need to bring in some people. Um, We tried doing a Patreon and we saw that, not that we weren't weren't successful with it, but it was more of like everybody, we would need enough content to go on a month to month basis. And I think we're already busy with making pages and, and trying to put out these issues and doing concept art and everything else that was on our plate. So we're like, let's do Kickstarter. We could do right. some really cool rewards. Um, we've always wanted to kind of do a merch line for Rays. And this kind right. of gave us that incentive. And yeah, we just saw that was a good way to connect with people and for people to come and help back our project as well. So Sam, talk to us about Rays. What can people expect from your storyline? um so you can expect a lot of twists and turns um okay i would say um you know a lot of people it's it's kind of like a fine line because we consider ourselves more zombie zombie-esque more zombie more okay. than a zombie genre um, okay what All you right. can expect is i think compelling storylines uh casts of misfit, misfits that don't really get along and kind of have to work together um, you're obviously going to get that horror aspect of it because that's what we're going off of with Rays. Right. That's kind of the foundation. But I think it's like an umbrella kind of effect where like horror's at the top and then we kind of leak over to like high intensity action, drama, mystery, romance, and everything kind of else in between. So that's kind of what I think Rays has to offer people. So even if you aren't necessarily like a horror fan, I think it mm. kind of would get your interest even if you weren't really necessarily interested in horror. You would still get that action. You would still get these compelling characters and these storylines. Okay. And so what was the – because you kind of have this zombie – as you say, there's a zombie background to this. Mm -hmm. Do you know as the writer – I always like to ask this question – what the source is of – yeah, so I, I would say it's like a lot of inspiration um, from a, a lot of different things, honestly. Uh, this right. was originally supposed to be a video game. So, like, we were huge gamers, me and my co-creator. Um, okay. So we took, and any gamers out there, if you know the game Left for Dead, that was, like, a huge influence on us. We played mm. thousands of hours of that game. <laughs> and that was kind of, like, it was that. And it was also, like, we wanted to tell a story that was, like, in New York City. I grew I grew up watching all these like old Marvel movies like the the Tobey Maguire Spider Man's and yeah. you know like all these different Marvel I think movies that were set in New York and comics too 
And I was just, it always piqued my interest. And one thing was, I haven't really seen it that much, but like a zombie genre in New York City, done right and done properly. Um, okay. And really don't start in New York City, but we're eventually going to get there. Uh, but we start in Peekskill, New York. So um, it's kind of like on the outskirts of the city. And we kind of wanted to give it almost like a suburb kind of feel at the very beginning of this before we obviously make it too overcomplicated. Right. So, so you had the idea of having uh, a zombie, zombie as story take place in basically uh, northern, northern New York, kind of mm-hmm. heading down to New York. Um, and what are some of the unique factors that you see in this, as you say, is that the zombie piece is just a backdrop, but you're really focusing on some of the horror and action, correct? Yeah. So I would say like the first, I think, interesting thing about rays is just how our zombies work and, and what they are. We actually coined them as calling them infected. Um, okay. and, and it was always like, like a zombie, the jo- zombie genre to me, I've always been a huge fan, but it was always like this started from a what if question. And the what if question was really like you have these three stages, like you have the human part, you have the zombie, but no one really told you the story of the middle part of that. So that's kind of where you see our infected take over. They are that middle stage. Um, okay. And they're kind of these roided up creatures who just want to beat the crap out of you and you know, even our like our zombie idea, like they 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 can bite people, but they're they're not biting them because they're a zombie. You know, mm. uh, the, the way they spread their infections, they actually touch you on the arm. It has to be skin to skin contact, so oh, leg, wow. arm, face, any of that, and then it's gonna get passed to the next person, and that's kind of how okay. they operate. Okay, um, do you know what the source? Like, do you have an idea as the writer what the um, the origin of yeah, so for this, um, I, I I can't go into all the details just because my co-creator really researched like all different sicknesses and we tried to make it as realistic as possible. Um, mm. What I would say, it's almost like a combination of like um, of these different viruses kind of okay. almost combined into one. So we really wanted like they have this animalistic nature to them. They can't really talk. They can't communicate with each other, really. But they still have this very like, like uh, base like assets for a human being, like almost like cavemen, where you're going around and hunting your prey. And that's okay. kind of how we how we wanted to design this virus. Is you don't really get much besides these roided out creatures that want to kill you. And it's right. like it's almost like this uh, like deeper connection of like these are still people like they feel pain they're not invincible like you can kill them but it's like Mm. are you killing a person or are you killing an infected and that's kind of i think some of the themes we go into in these few issues like how far can a person go how like are you can you kill someone like what is how how is it going to affect you too if you do do that right so now that you're on issue number five Mm -hmm. Um, as a writer, how much have you written out? How much have you scripted out already? Um, let's just say the next five years, we know what we're doing. Uh, we've been, really? Wow. Yeah. We've been building this story since we were in seventh grade. So wow. Okay. We've, we've been on this project for a decade and a half. Um, so we've been with Ray's for a really long time, but we've been fine tuning everything and trying to get everything right because we don't want to put something out to you guys that we think isn't good enough. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we're perfectionists when it comes to that. Uh, But yeah, we have, we have some really crazy storylines coming up and some really, a lot of things I don't think people would expect from the zombie genre. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's exciting. We, 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 we are ready to tell this story and we're ready to bring it to people and, come out of the you know come out of the doors running you know we're, we're ready so what what's your plan with this being your first kickstarter with rays that you're doing mm-hmm. issues one through five when is issue six coming out so we aren't on six yet we're kind of finishing up everything on five and we're really okay. close to being done with five um we are i'm i'm already actively working on six because i do co- uh some of the like um perspectives and panel design and whatnot Okay. So I'm, I'm working on that right now, 
But I would, what we're trying to do is we're trying to release uh, five to the public, probably closer towards Halloween because okay. we know what's in five and six. And to us, five is more of a horror uh, issue than I think six is. Um, okay. So we're probably going to do issue five to the general public in October, and we're going to shoot for issue six by the end of this year. So before okay. you, the year ends, you're going to get two fresh issues of Rays. So are you looking at as well then for your your schedule on this? Is is there an end series? Like is it going to be a 30-issue arc or is it going to be a, a 10-issue arc? What's, your, what's so, your story arc? Yeah, so – so right now, and if people have read issue four, really where we're starting off, and me and me and Trey call this the prologue, but it's the junkyard arc. So we're going to get a few issues of them at the junkyard, and you're going to mm. see what takes place there. And that's ultimately going to push the story forward without getting into okay. too many details. Um, we're kind of doing this like, I would say, arcs in the sense of they're going to maybe a different location or something different is happening in the story, and that may take up a certain amount of issues for that arc, but it does have a beginning, middle, and end. Uh, we do have an end in sight. Uh, this isn't going to go for a thousand issues, but um, it just depends, too. Like, when we write these issues, sometimes it takes, like, one issue to explain something, and sometimes it's like this, you know, this domino effect. We introduce this really cool thing, and then, like, we're three issues in, and we haven't even wrapped up what we wanted to wrap up, you know what I mean? So it, it kind of just depends as we're going through this series. All right. And I love your design. I love, I just wanted to bring up the fact that, so your, your, your cover designs are fun because it has this, you have rays lit, written in the middle and you always have something happen on either side. Yes. Issue one, you have the, the zombie hands yep. um, issue. I'm pulling up issue three has yep. a tire track. So that's yeah. actually an Easter egg too to what happens in the issue, which people don't really know. Like it is oh, a that's cool. It's a tease because it's like anybody who goes to a comic book store, and me and Trey talked about this for hours, is when you get an issue, it's like on the cover, you know what's gonna happen. And we didn't right. necessarily want to do that. That's why we went this route, because we wanted to be like bring you in, make you interested, and have something that has to do with the issue as you're going along. So each cover you're seeing, it's a little hint to where either we're going or what's going to happen in the story. Um, so yeah. Who, who, where did you get the covers done? Those are gorgeous. Um, it's a guy named Ivan Lugamer. I met him about, I'd say five years ago. I wow. went on, uh, I don't know if anyone's heard of the website guru. I don't really use it anymore, but, um, it's where you can like hire artists and whatnot. And this okay. guy kind of just fell into my lap. Like, it's almost like destiny, honestly. Um, I can't even say what was, like, the first conversation we had because I don't remember. But we like, kind of talked over the years. We were going to do these, like, little spinoff origin stories for Rays and these characters. We ultimately scrapped them. But he did some issues for that or some covers for that. And, yeah, he, he did issue one. And we kind of came up with this design. And we fell in love with it. And we're wow. just like man, we got to stay this consistent and we just got to keep doing these covers like this because it works. Um, right. And yeah, so that's kind of the biggest struggle, trying to figure out what the cover is going to be. Uh, <laughs> but but as you said, like it's good, taking place in the woods. So mm -hmm. this one is giving you that those tree feel to it. Yeah. And I love it. There's a sense also the cover design with the red, with the dripping red paint um, on here. I'm, it's probably not paint, but the uh, the idea of it gives you that sense of claustrophobic. There's almost a claustrophobic sense to it, which is Absolutely. pretty cool. It's also like, you know, we, we want to go zombie-esque. So it's like the blood right. dripping down into the issue number. You know, right. it's just like a little subtle touch, you right. know. But, yeah, we got some posters. These are all the kind of merch options we're trying to offer on Kickstarter. So we have this poster, which is – um the amazing Spider-Man uh, cover. Right. Um, and we kind of wanted to raise it and kind of give it something, you know, very ominous and horror centric and make it very, very appealing and something that people would want. And my little brother is actually the one who did that. So he's oh, on the cool. creative team. So Trey kind of drew some of, uh, some of uh, the character design on this, but then my little brother was the one who came in and did all the colors and gave it that, uh, lasting effect 
So yeah, let's talk about your pledge levels. This is some good stuff. So you have right out the gate, you got your PDF issue number one PDF. Mm -hmm. um, and that's for $3. Then you have issue number five PDF for $5. Mm -hmm. Or you can get issues one through five digital PDF for $12. Yes. That's a really good deal right there. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of our favorites because like you're getting two dollars and forty cents per issue. You know, right. I don't know. I don't know anyone who else is doing that. Right. <laughs> but yeah, we want you to get the whole story too. You know, that's the good thing is like if you've never read Rays, we're kind of like we want you to come into the story and get invested and get excited, and that way you get all five issues right off the bat for you know a little over ten bucks. That's awesome. And then you have for then talk to us about your pledge your fifteen dollar pledge level. Yeah, so then you get uh, issue five physical. So you get all four issues digitally, and then you're going to get a okay. physical issue five. Uh, kind of put it up a little bit more expensive just because we got to ship it out to you. But right. uh, I know a lot of people do prefer the physical. So we wanted to give you both options, digital and physical, you know? Okay, right. And then you have your $20 variant cover. And that's yes. the one with the... With the uh, the boy in the middle yes so that's yep. our first ever variant cover we've never come up with a variant so very exclusive to anyone who comes into this kickstarter and ben and trey both designed that trey did all the drawing on this and then ben came in and just destroyed it with the colors nice okay and then talk to us about your 35 dollars pledge level Yep. So then you're going to get issues one through four digitally. You're going to get uh, two issue uh, issue fives physically. Um, okay. And I believe that's the, uh, I believe it's a variant and then the regular issues. So you kind of get both covers, but you get two issue fives. And then you're going to get the Apocalypse sticker set, which the oh. line art was done by me. Oh, cool. <laughs> A lot of people don't know. Um, and then Ben came in and he, and he just killed it with the color. But yeah. We want to do something fun like it's a zombie apocalypse, but we want to kind of like, you know, just have fun with these rewards, you know, right. and, and give you something that you guys would want, you know, just slap a sticker on something that uh, you'd want to slap it on. Like, I just I just think it's a fun it's a fun play on our world too. like the whole smiley face. That's the infected veins from our story. And that's kind mm -hmm. of the design we came up with. Um, but, yeah, we just want to have fun on this one. Right. And. So the $50 pledge level is the physical catch up where you yep. get one through five issues, physical copies of that plus the apocalypse sticker set and mm -hmm. the infected girl keychain. Yep. That sounds cool. Yep. So we got the boy and the girl infected keychain. Um, if you want the boy infected keychain, we also have add ons. So if you want to add on the keychain, you could always do that too. Uh, okay. But yeah, we want to just have fun. I mean, this is funny because like, we were talking about the Patreon earlier. This was actually the images for the tiers on Patreon. And we're like, oh, why cool. don't we just use these and like have fun with it, make them into little keychains. So you got a little zombie keychain, you know? Right. And so how, so, so a question for that, how did you come up with the place to get those keychains made? Um, we did a lot of like, uh, I would say research before we even decided mm. on what rewards we wanted to do. Uh, we are a little bit on a budget too. So we wanted to find something that obviously was good quality um, and right. that's and where we could make them. Um, uh, my little brother too, he does a lot of uh, art. So like stickers, keychains and whatnot. He already got some of that kind of printed and I was able to see the quality before we, before we're going to obviously get them. Um, okay. so I already kind of know the quality of it and I was pretty impressed by the quality. So I'm like, we should just do that. We already have kind of like the resources and whatnot. Um, right. and then it's just all about, you know, obviously depending on how much money we raise, obviously budgeting our money correctly, where we can send it out to people efficiently. Right. And then you have for $65, you mm -hmm. also got issue five, the issues one through four, mm -hmm. um, and five physical copies with signatures. Yep. The infected girl keychain, the apocalypse sticker set, which we talked about there, but now an 11 by 17 poster. Yep. So that Bucky poster you saw, we're going to send that to you as well. So it's kind of like a pretty much the catalog, uh, bundle, you know? Wow. Okay. Uh, so you're pretty much getting almost everything for 65 bucks, which I think <sighs> is, that is, yeah, 
this that's pretty amazing. good deal, you know. We wanted uh, right. the biggest thing we want to do on our Kickstarter is like, you know, we want to make things affordable for people. Like if you're 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 coming to help our project out, so we want to make it worth your while, you know, as you're coming in. Right. And then for for eighty dollars, you get mm -hmm. basically the same thing, but you get the variant cover instead of the. Yep. So you get them all signed, pretty much. I think the two issues signed. Um, you are getting the infected couple cheats keychain, so you're actually getting two keychains. So you get the boy oh, and the girl. Wow. Okay. And then the apocalypse sticker, and then obviously the eleven by seventeen Bucky poster as well. You know, I gotta say, what I love about the 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 his and her zombie keychains. This is a perfect gift for those that are listening to, and if you and uh, you and your, your loved one both are into zombies, mm -hmm. you get a his, her keychain. Exactly. Ones. You get an extra so, one, you can give it to someone, you know what I right? mean? So let me ask you a question. If somebody had a, somebody wanted to get like a, a, a her, her keychain or a mm -hmm. his, his, is that possible as well? Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, cool. um, right. I mean, anyone who does that too, they could obviously message me on Kickstarter as well, or I'll reach out to them. And if they have a specific need, we'll be more right. than happy to give you obviously two girls, two boys, whatever, whatever you guys want, you know? That's cool. All right. That's awesome. So talk to us about this is exciting. Talk about about the one hundred and twenty dollar pledge level. Yes, yeah, so that one's pretty cool. This is like the first time ever. So we uh, we wanted to do uh, we want to do like some sort of physical merch. So okay, um, this is our first Kickstarter, and as obviously we do more and more, we'll try and get more and more expansive with these rewards. But it's gonna be our first raised uh, dad hat that we're making, which. Um, I personally want, I haven't even got one yet, but I want one. I want to back this and, and, and have a dad hat. Um, and yeah, you kind of, you can, you can rock our merch. You can rock our name. It's pretty much just going to be a black hat with the red raised text with, I think just looks very classy, you know? Nice. Um, and the cool thing about our Kickstarter, if anyone was confused about the, the tiers, you could kind of scroll through. We made it pretty friendly where, you know, you can kind of see all the different images and show you what we're trying to give you. Um, right. I know sometimes gets lost in translation, so it's better to have a physical representation as well. Right. No, that's pretty cool. And then you have, um, yeah, and then you have, and as you hear, here's your uh, raised comics hat for yep. uh, that. So as you say, it is a, it's a, would you like a ball cap? Like, yeah, is that, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sports hat. And then for $200, that's, you get that every is, you get that's the big thing. That's the big one right there. Yeah. So you're getting a lot of rewards. <laughs> um, and for this for this one too, uh, I talked to my artists and I talked to everybody on my team, and we came up with the idea is if you spend 200 bucks, we're gonna draw you as an infected, we're gonna color you in, and then we're gonna send it to you physically. So you're oh. getting like your own custom drawing of yourself in our world as an infected. And it's 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 gonna be super fun and super cool. So and 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 hurry now and get them now because there's only four left. We made it very limited because we are obviously working our economy all the time. So we are a little bit low on time for obviously having like fifty we have to draw. So right. Trey's gonna be drawing you. So we we only have five available. And but and then we have the stretch goals. You know it doesn't stop once we hit two K. My favorite is the three K bundle. We're giving you six uh indie comics digitally so wow it, and it's not just a horror genre we're doing all genres so a lot of really cool creators a lot of really cool and hard-working people you're going to be able to see their project and hopefully keep a lookout for them when they do their own kickstarter and obviously try to push their comic forward as well you know wow that's awesome but yeah, we also have the 4K, um, the digital wallpaper for the junkyard. So it's going to be in full mm -hmm. color. And then we have the movie poster for the infected for Rays. So we're going to kind of make it into our own movie poster. And that's a little little teaser of what it might look like. So I'm really, really curious on this as well, is that when you look at um, your cast of characters and what's really mm -hmm. cool is that you actually have a list of all your cast of characters yep. um, that's in it. Are these the same characters? How how much has the characters evolved since your initial idea when you started making those characters? Started I, making the script? Yeah, they kind of they evolved a lot. Um, when we first okay. wrote when we first wrote them, they kind of just sounded all the same. 
Um, so we definitely tried to get, and one thing cool about the Kickstarter, which is like one of my favorite parts is a lot of people, like we haven't given a ton of information on these characters. Like you've been, if, if you read issues one through four, you'll kind of notice is like these, a little bit of information is being held. And this kind of mm. gives you a deep dive into these characters, where they come from, what, what, what their thing is, how they think, I think, uh, what they're associated with, because they, they are just a bunch of high schoolers. So like okay. jobs and whatnot, they're not really there yet, but you can kind of see where we're going with these characters a little bit. Um, but yeah, they, they would definitely were different. It was just all about like, you know, we have eight characters, which not a lot of people have done. Uh, right. I don't think many people have done with starting a project. And it was all about making them all feel different um, and all you know, having dimension to their, to, to who they are, you know, um, I hate watching a show or reading a comic where I feel like it's this bland person that doesn't feel real. You know what I mean? Like any person that you meet is always going to be a character, you know, right. I'm sure we all know people we work with they're seen and they're just like, wow, that person is really eccentric. And you remember right. that person cause they're eccentric. And that's <laughs> kind of where we go with our characters. You're going to see. And the coolest thing, like, took trey and ben like almost two months to make this picture but um each person you're seeing you're kind of seeing a little bit of what kind of characteristics they have you know like ian has the rose gold sunglasses on with money in his pocket you can kind of tell he's you know he's a little bit on the snobby rich side um <laughs> We obviously see a little bit of anger with Ashley pulling on Ray's jacket. So you can kind of see that. You can obviously see Victoria in the middle doing the goofy face. So she's playful. And obviously Bucky behind waving for the selfie. Frankie's a little bit of an alcoholic because he's drinking a beer in the back. <laughs> and then you got Ricky, who's more, I would say, childlike and innocent, where he's pretending like he has a gun in his hands, but it's his actual hand. And then yeah. you obviously have Sarah all the way uh, smelling a rose, which I think just symbolizes her innocence um, in this world. So right. a lot of little things we put in there, but it was for a point. We wanted to get across how these characters were. Right. So the, the fact that you, as you said, you kind of redesigned the characters over the last, you know, several, several years, has that affected now that issue five is, is, is out and you, you know, working on issue six, how much has your meta plot, your large, your large plot of the story changed with the influence of the characters? Oh, I think a lot. I mean, I okay. think honestly, like some of these characters are going to make good decisions. Some of them are going to make bad decisions. And ultimately how they do that and why they do that is ultimately going to push the story forward. Because it okay. it's really all about introducing things and you know you want your characters kind of go up and down through the storyline that you're trying to tell um right. and it was always like we had to learn it for ourselves we did eight characters because we wanted to um and it was all about like kind of like learning for ourselves like you don't need every character to have the spotlight in this issue so who can we pick for this issue who's gonna be that right. important thing and that important theme we're trying to get across because every issue you do we try to introduce a theme issue two was oh you saw a bunch of infected yeah we're gonna give you one and we're gonna show you how dangerous they are <laughs> issue, issue three was a bunch of these characters who don't get along and they're forced to be in a car together and you're just gonna see how they interact and then issue four was the thought provoking of, you know, and not to give away anything, but issue four, we introduce how these infected work. They meet someone who is infected and they're trying to help him. And you have a choice. Let him turn and kill you or kill him before he turns. And that ultimately right. is the catapult to how all these characters go in different directions. Okay. Right. Um, so, as you say, there, there, there's a there's a journey happening here. Is the journey that you see as a writer is the journey more physical, like heading in a separate direction, or is a journey more internal, where the characters have to learn and explore more of themselves? I think it's a little bit of both, honestly. Like if you read our uh, anyone who reads our issues, one of the characters I'd like to highlight is Victoria, because you know mm. we call it the Bear Mountain Bridge Massacre because that's exactly what it is. It's a it's a massacre in issue one. You know, right. and 
we wanted to introduce this thing of, you know, one thing that I think isn't talked about is like anxiety, PTSD, things that would really mess you up if you were to see these certain things. And we kind of dive into that. So Victoria as a character, she, I would say a little bit more on the emotional side and how her story progresses is going to be a little bit deeper towards some characters where it's more of a physical story where they're either mm. trying to get somewhere or they're trying to do something. Um, but it depends what the story demands from them. You know, we have a lot of characters and it's all about finding the right rhythm for each one of them. Okay. Uh, so what's, so, so what's next? What's next for the characters? Is there, there is something that people can start expecting on um, focusing more on, on, uh, a few of them or are you keeping up with the whole ensemble cast idea? Yeah. So I think when you pick up issue five and to keep the premise short and sweet, which you can read on our Kickstarter, it is about two things. The infected that they wanted to kill is now gone. And the little boy they were just with is now missing. So it is mm. a race. We have to find this little boy before that infected does. Because if we don't okay. find him, all hell is going to break loose. Right. So it really is, I think, that whole element. It, you're going to see where it pulls certain characters. Or it's already started to pull certain characters in issue four. So the way you see that play out, you'll kind of just have to wait and see. But I will say the things we're about to pull in the next few issues, I think, are going to surprise a lot of people. Really? Okay. Yes. All right. All right. I don't want to spoil so, too much. Just give you a little taste, but <laughs> right, right. So, is there any idea as you have you as you kind of created that you kind of have an idea of what the source of the origin of the of the virus and all that stuff? Um, do you have an idea also from the world building perspective? The uh, what's happening in different parts of the world as well. Yeah, so I think you're going to get to see that um, as we push forward with the story. Um, I always like to say it's – it, and this is an exaggeration, obviously, but uh, it's an 1,000-piece puzzle, and we're going to give you one piece at a time. So ah, okay. the, the, the zombie element and the origin of this, of this virus, um, we're going to slowly show you how it's going to play out, and I think it might surprise – people the direction we're gonna go with this virus but yeah okay. <laughs> um and and you sticking and also just is there gonna be a point of introducing more characters or 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 are you gonna just keep these how they how, how it is right now um i will say these are the core eight so you will be okay. with this group i think for a good amount of time um we are always trying to introduce new characters um, and it's all about like, for us, it was always about if we ever had any side characters that you run into or anyone else that, you know, that we would introduce, they really have, it is a question, are they there for one issue or are they there for an arc? Um, what is their point of them being there? Um, right. but yeah, I would say if anything, and not to be super vague, but our world is going to get bigger. It's not going to get smaller. So, okay. Now, what well, what are some of the things as a writer uh, that you that you're really proud of in your issue five and six, as compared to that you wish you knew when you started issue number one? Oh, so much, <laughs> so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I would say the 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 one thing I'm proud of is, as far as writing goes, is. I think me and Trey talked about it the other day. Issue five, you better get ready for action because that's what it is. And you better get ready for issue six because that's going to be characters. And to me, I am more interested in issue six than I would be in issue five because I think I think how playful and how over the top we are with these characters is going to bring people in and just be like, yo, what are, what are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> And that's what's fun about this project. Just throw in a wrench in the whole thing, um, which I think you're going to see in issue six. Not to take away from issue five, because issue five, I've seen, I'd say, 80% of it from what Trey's done and what he's created on the art side. And it looks and feels incredible. Issue five is oh, the wow. first book we've made that it gives me anxiety as I read it. 
Um, <laughs> so I think that's a good thing. <laughs> right. Yeah, because you know what's happening. And you do have – and you also have on here as well. You do have people look at the Kickstarter. They can see the first few pages yeah. mm-hmm. of, of issue number five as well. Yeah, and they're going to see a little bit of our style change. And I promise this is the last one, but Trey came on as a co-creator slash artist now. So he kind of picked up the piece and said, let's do this thing. And, Mm -hmm. you know, he kind of had to – he wasn't didn't really have that much of an art background, so he had to learn how to draw. And on top of that, he does this all on his phone. So, which is kind of – He draws this on his phone? Yes. Wow. Yeah, so he's incredible. I am lucky to have him as a co-creator slash artist. I'm I'm blessed for the team I have. If I'm being totally honest. Wow. Yeah, he he did an incredible job. So, and like I said, it's gonna get even more crazy. This is this is just the tip of the iceberg. So, I'm really That's excited impressive. for people to read this issue. This issue. Right. Right. Cool. So. So you're at right now, you know, you know, pulling it, you know, lo- looking at your, looking at your stats, you're well over halfway already. Mm-hmm. You got 20 days left to go as of this recording. Yep. Um, that's, ex- that's really cool. That's really cool, Sam. That's yes. pretty, that's pretty yes. nice. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So, so if people want to learn more about Ray's, where's the best mm-hmm. place they can go to and, and learn more about, learn more about the story? We're on Facebook, so you can – for all of these, you can just search R-A-Z-E, and you can search comics if you want to because a lot of our handles are with comics. But um, just search R-A-Z-E on Facebook. We have a, a Facebook page. So anything race-related, we're going to be posting about it on there. Uh, we're also okay. on Twitter. So if you uh, find our handle, Raise Comics, um, R-A-Z-E again, and then you can come find me too at comics underscore raise um we're also on instagram which is raise comics we're on tiktok which is raise comics mm-hmm. we are on mm-hmm. uh youtube i believe too is raise comics uh good interface for anybody who wants to learn more about the story is global comics or amazon amazon you can get the physical and global comics you can get the digital uh, and that's where you can go and digitally read uh most of the comics on that interface or you can come to our nice. Kickstarter and you can uh come back us and get excited for issue number five Right. That's awesome. Perfect. Well, thanks a lot, Sam, for coming on. I'm uh, really excited to uh, keep following it along. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. (laughs) You're welcome. And come back on for when you're doing your Kickstarter for issue number six. Absolutely. I will for sure. As long as you want to have me on, I'll come on it. Okay. Perfect. All right. (laughs) Have a good one, Sam. You too. So I live in a loft, so like we kind of have like uh this is kind of like I would say the office room. So I kind of just turn it into the interview room now. So anytime I have an interview, just set up the lamp, set up the camera, everything, and it's kind of like <laughs> a good backdrop. So you know, That's I don't have cool, I want I want really cool posters, but if I put it all the way on that back wall, no one's gonna know. I don't even <laughs> think I could get up there because it's like twenty feet high, so I wouldn't be able to put post the posters up there. <laughs> That's amazing. So that's set that the optical illusions on that makes it look like it's just kind of like like a bunk over you. But that's like a yeah. Big no, so like there's like a spiral staircase. So you have to go up the staircase and get up to this little loft area. So it looks like, you know, if you were to go over this this, you would probably fall down like ten feet. So oh, it is wow. pretty. It is pretty high up. There is an optical illusion on that. Yeah. Where it's just like <laughs> over there, and it's just. Yeah, so you think it's like flat or anything, but no, it's it's there's a pretty big drop. Oh wow, okay, okay. That's pretty cool. So yeah, any of the audio listeners, you're missing out on this. This yeah, is a right? pretty cool thing. Yeah, see? Yeah.